Thank you, thank you so much. That was Michael Lagasor from Moralities of Intelligent Machines. Our next team is actually a team that could be the godfather of pretty much all the other teams here. Viewfinder is working on some extremely fundamental questions. They are defining a whole new scientific worldview. Please welcome Paavo Pylkkänen and Tuomas Tahko, Viewfinder. Okay. All right, so uh, our team connects with this theme of new worldview. And besides myself, there is Tarja Kallio coming over there and Tuomas Tahko. We are basically philosophers with some background in the natural sciences, especially physics and some cognitive science. Okay, uh, science is great. And basic research, which uh, people do out of their curiosity, it can really give right, be very, very successful. Think, for example, the quantum theory. Presumably, people did, did it out of interest, out of curiosity. They want to understand atomic phenomena. And yet, today, if you look at the applications, the transistor, the laser, some estimate that this would be about one-third of the U.S. economy. So that's pretty well done of people like Bohr and Einstein, who they seem to be just having fun and, you know, they're not trying to do anything useful. So, anyway. But science not only makes the world, it also breaks the world. I mean, we all know that all kinds of problems come with science. For example, we wouldn't have biodiversity loss or global warming without science and technology. And also, we don't seem to be very good at solving those kind of problems quickly enough. We have all the knowledge, tremendous amount of knowledge, but, but it just doesn't seem to work. So one aspect here is that science has become very specialized. You know that in neighboring disciplines, even in the natural science, people don't really understand what the other people are doing. And so, of course, if you have to solve a problem, it can be slow and, and frustrating. So one thing we need, therefore, is a map or a worldview so that we can navigate this very complex uh, jungle of scientific knowledge. But it's not only enough to have the map. We actually need to communicate much better to create such a map. And so this is one, another important as aspect here that, that we, we uh, want to emphasize. And even if we think of Bohr and Einstein, yes, they were brilliant. They gave us one third of the US economy with a few other people, of course. <laughs> and interesting thing is that when it came to the big questions, the map of the world, the, the big question in physics, they actually had very different maps and they were not able to agree. And some say, that actually physics is still in a confusion because of this great disagreement. So there, it's a kind of paradoxical situation. On the one hand, yes, science is great. On the other hand, we haven't really realized the full potential of science because people have it very difficult to communicate, make a common map so that they could find, find uh, the way. So what is our solution? You know, it's a minor problem, so we can, we can easily solve that. Uh, <laughs> Well, we, to get started, we need a new dialogue method, a new method of dialogue. The basic idea of, of this method is to help scientists to locate, to become aware of their non-negotiable assumptions. Those are the things that really block the dialogue. People are usually not aware of them. I mean, Bohr and Einstein, it seems, in retrospect, didn't really understand why they disagreed. And practically, we, we try to do this with an internet platform called Debate Graph, which makes visible those uh, hidden assumptions. You can see the Debate Graph platform in action on the screen right now. This is already an existing software, and we have the collaboration of the co-founders of the platform, uh, people called David Price and Peter Baldwin. It's a highly versatile and customizable system. The mind map style you can see on the screen is just one of many ways you can visualize. We have the uh, tools to integrate links to published articles, Wikipedia pages, even video clips. There's also a discussion forum integrated to the platform. 
Perhaps most importantly, however, we can use various color codes and uh, other tools to visualize those non-negotiable assumptions that Barbara just mentioned, those background assumptions that might uh, block communication between scientists. But here we have the tools to navigate the scientific jungle. What do we hope to do with this? Well, one important thing is to facilitate novel interdisciplinary work. If scientists from various disciplines are better aware of the background assumptions of their colleagues, then problems in communication, communication breakdown, can be prevented at an early stage. But we also hope to expand this to science users, not just science makers. We feel that understanding science is an important part of public education, perhaps the most important part of public education, and we have the tools to revolutionize it. Finally, because we have the Debate Graph platform at our disposal, we as a team can focus on administrating the platform and recruiting the top scientists in various different fields. We already have a pool of such scientists at our disposal in areas such as quantum theory and theory of consciousness, but if we get the award, we can expand on this. We can really do the whole science. We will start from scientists themselves, from scientists to scientists. That's what we do in any case. But we need to build a database first before we can open the platform to the public. Once we have the database and uh, some pilot studies, we can open the platform to policymakers, to science policymakers. We think that various issues in science policy, such as those uh, surrounded uh, issues like climate change, uh, could be solved uh, with simply better dialogue. Also, science policymakers could recruit the team to visualize a certain uh, contemporary science policy issue. Ultimately, we want to open the platform to the general public and uh, really take advantage of the power of crowdsourcing. We feel that simply by making communication more effective, we can revolutionize scientific dialogue. It's Wikipedia that's scientifically rigorous, interactive, and visually pleasing. Wikipedia on steroids to revolutionize scientific dialogue. Thank you very much. <laughs>